Oh, Mona, oh. sorry to disturb you. I'm in a bit of a rush, but I just wanted to tell you to come to my house this Friday at six o'clock for a sleepover. Okay. Yeah, we'll oh, have... Let me, let me ask my mum first. Actually, oh, yes. And then. Good oh, idea. I'm sure she'll say yes. We'll have movies and popcorn. It'll be really fun. But I've got to go now, so let me know, okay? Okay, we'll do. Mads, I was just looking for you. Oh, how hi. are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Well, I've got some exciting news. It's my birthday party on Friday at 6 o'clock. You're going to come, right? This Friday? Yeah, this Friday. Make sure you're there, 6 o'clock. Um, can I invite someone, Rania? Um... Let's just keep it between us, okay? But I'll see you there. Okay. Bye. Well, you know. Oh, what should I do? I said yes to Rania, and I was so sure that I want to go. But then Amy asked as well. Rania <laughs> Don. Hi, welcome to Asika TV. We're here at Season 2, Episode 7. It's great to have you here. Today, we're learning that God is loyal. He was so loyal that He made the Israelites' food fall from the sky for 40 years. Amy, are you saying it was raining food? Yep. Oh my goodness. Delicious cheeseburgers, I wonder. Ooh. Mm. What food would you want to fall from the sky? Chocolate. Mm. Mm. Good one. <laughs> Our food may not rain from the sky, but God loyally provides for us every day. The Israelites weren't always loyal in trusting God, but God is loyal no matter what. Let's see how He showed the Israelites His loyalty in the Bible. The Bible is amazing. It's full of incredible stories, and they're all true. God gave us the Bible so He can speak to us anytime. He's loyal, so He's always here for us. Let's hear from Him as we explore the Bible. Hmm, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do this Friday. Rania invited me, and she's my best friend, to her house to watch movies and to sleep over. And we're going to have so much fun and I don't want to let her down. But also Amy invited me as well and she's so popular and if I go to her party, I'm going to be popular too. This is very, very hard to decide. I don't want to let any of them down. Hmm. What would you do in this situation? Be honest. Today we're learning that God is loyal. Loyalty means sticking with someone. In the example that Myrna shared, the loyal thing for her to do would be to go to Rania's sleepover because she was committed to that. They're best friends. What's one word that describes how it feels when someone isn't loyal to you? 
Let's dig into the Bible and look at how God showed loyalty to people He committed to. In the Bible, God chose a group of people, the Israelites, to be His people. He promised to look out for them all the time, and He wanted them to follow Him all the time. God committed Himself to them. So now you see that we have a heart on our board. The heart represents God's loving heart, and these sticky notes represent the Israelites. I'm going to give you girls some sticky notes so that it can represent when the Israelites are close to God. Watch what happens. This is the Israelites sticking with God and being committed to Him. Okay. God freed the Israelites from slavery in a miraculous way. He sent plagues on the Egyptians who were keeping the Israelites as slaves. Finally, the Egyptians let the Israelites go. Then when the Egyptians tried to follow the Israelites, God split the sea in half so the Israelites had an escape route like no one had ever seen before. After that, the Israelites travelled through the desert and couldn't find any water except really bitter water. So God made the water taste good. God loyally provided a ton of miracles for His people. After seeing all that amazing stuff within about a month, you'd think that the Israelites would loyally trust God as they kept walking through the desert. The Israelites got hungry. Let's see if they stuck to God and asked Him for help. I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 3. And the children of Israel said to them, O oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Even though God had provided so much for the Israelites, they didn't ask God for help when they got hungry. They didn't trust Him to provide. Instead, they focused on themselves. So now, girls, could you move all those sticky notes that represent the Israelites out of God's loving heart onto the picture below, which is the Israelite? It means that they stopped trying to trust God and trust it in themselves instead. But God is loyal, and even though the Israelites complained, He kept His promise to look out for them. Here's what He said that He would do. This is verses 4 to 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day, that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. That sounds pretty good. Let's stick our sticky notes back to God's loving heart. That evening, God kept His promise and covered their camp with quail for everyone to eat. What's quail? Well, a quail is like a small chicken. It's a tasty food for them to eat. With bellies full of quail, the Israelites went into their tents for the night. But God's promise didn't stop there. He sent them something else to eat. The next morning, the Israelites came out of their tents and saw something weird on the ground. Let's see. I'll continue reading from Exodus. And when the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. We read earlier that God have the specific rules about how to collect the food, called manna. He told them to collect only what they needed for their tents and not to collect any extra 
to try and save for the next day. Why do you think God did this? To test whether the Israelites trusted God or not. That's right. So let's see what the Israelites did, even though God said not to keep leftovers. Then the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more and some less. And Moses said, Let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was angry with them. Uh Uh-oh! They focused on themselves again instead of trusting in God's loyalty. So girls, could you remove the sticky notes out of God's heart back to themselves? After that, the Israelites followed God's rules. They didn't pick up any extra. So let's move the sticky notes back into God's loving heart now. But God had different rules for the sixth day. He wanted to give the Israelites a gift so they wouldn't have to gather manna or cook it on the seventh day each week, which was the Sabbath, as this was a day of rest. So he told them that on the sixth day, they should collect double what they needed and save some for the seventh day. What do you think the Israelites did? God is loyal. He gave the Israelites enough food that they wouldn't have to go out the next day. But the Israelites, once again, weren't so loyal. Let's see what happened in Exodus chapter 16, 27 to 29. Ranya, do you mind reading? Sure. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day together, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath, Therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Hmm, so we see what happens. It looks like the Israelites didn't trust God again. So girls, can you move those sticky notes out of God's loving heart back to the Israelites? God offered them a gift by making the manna last and saving them from work on the seventh day. He wanted them to have a chance to rest. But they focused on themselves and wanted to make sure they didn't miss any food. This time I'll read from verse 30. So the people rested on the seventh day. How would you describe the stickiness of our sticky notes now compared to how they were at the beginning? Are they still sticky? Hmm. Not as much. They're peeling on the sides. Mm. Yeah, and we really have to put it on the air so it stays on. Mm, So they're not sticking as strong anymore. No. Okay. So how do the unsticky notes remind you of someone who's not loyal? How would you describe the stickiness of the heart stickers? God is loyal. You might say he stuck with the Israelites. His love never went away. But God did get upset when the Israelites weren't loyal to him. They kept complaining or going their own way instead of trusting him and following his instructions. Like our sticky notes, they weren't very sticky. They didn't trust him to be loyal. But Let's listen to just how loyal God was about his manna. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. God was so loyal that for 40 years the Israelites traveled, they never had to go without food. God always gave them manna week after week every day except the day that they could rest. God is loyal, but just like the Israelites, we're not always loyal to Him. Instead of sticking with God, sometimes we choose our own way and focus on ourselves. Let's ask Him to help us be more loyal like He is. Welcome to our object lesson. We'd love for you to try this one at home with us. All you're going to need is a balloon and an empty can of soft drink. 
Now, girls, we're going to try and make this can move without touching it. Do you think we're going to be able to do it? I don't know. No way. No? All right, let's try using our balloon. So first, we have to put some static into our balloon. Mm. So I'm going to rub it on my head. Uh, oh, really cute. Look at your hair, Anya. <laughs> and for a while, is it sticking? Let's see. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. It's going to work. Mm. Mm. Oh. Maybe we need a little bit more static? I think so. Mm. My hair's going to get really messy. <laughs> I've never seen this work before. A balloon moving a soft can drink without touching it. You'll be surprised. Okay, All right. Oh! <gasps> what? Look at that. It did work. Mm -hmm. How? <gasps> it moved the can. Oh. Oh, just one way. Just one way. That was incredible. Oh my goodness. Well, what surprised you about this experiment? The fact that we didn't have to use our hands to touch the can to move it. I just couldn't believe that a balloon could move a can without touching it. Oh my goodness. Hmm. It's pretty cool <laughs> that we were able to make the can move without touching it. And that was because of the static created by rubbing the balloon on Rania's head. It reminds me a little of the Israelites. They would follow God when he was good to them. But then, after a short time, they would find something to complain about, or they would worry and stop trusting God, and they were not loyal. But God is loyal, and no matter how many times the Israelites would turn away from God, he always had a way to get them back. God is loyal, so we should be loyal too, especially to our friends. But sometimes things can get in the way of our friendships. Maybe your friend has moved schools, or you no longer like the same things. And just like the balloon, sometimes you can lose static. But it's important to remember that God is loyal. Nothing can separate or get in between us and God. He loves us and He sticks with us no matter what. Hmm, do I have to be loyal even when someone isn't loyal to me? Let's dig into that. So here you see we've got a foam cup, some skewers and some pom-poms. I bet you're wondering what we're going to do with them, right? Mm. Well, we're going to try something. So, in this cup, we're going to use these skewers here and we're going to poke them through our cup. But there's a reason why. Let's think of some times that our friends have been good to us girls and have supported us and been loyal to us. And for each time you can think of, we'll stick one of these skewers all the way through. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I remember a time when I was feeling sick and one of my friends supported me and came and visited me. Oh, that's really nice. Do you want to stick one through? Sure. Okay, go for it. Ooh. Lovely. Hmm. I remember a time one of my friends said that she would help me with my homework. And she did. Nice. Mm hmm. Well, I used to have a friend who would walk to school with me every day. That's really nice. I think you could stick in two. Mm. It was every day. Every day, wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the one at the bottom? Yeah, sure. There we go. I remember another one. I remember a time I lost my dog and my friend helped me to look for him everywhere. That's nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Mm. I remember a time my friends helped me understand the Bible for more reading every wow, week. Wow, that's a good friend. Hmm, nice. mm, one last one. Oh, well, I remember a time where I was having a party and my friend came over and helped me to set up. That's yes. a good one. She helped yeah. me put the food out and the decorations up. Oh, lucky you had that help. Mm. Would have been hard by yourself. Where should I stick this? Hmm, maybe right across okay. the top here. See. So many nice things our friends do. Wow, our cup's pretty full, right? Mm. Mm. 
That's awesome. Well, now that our cup is full of all these good deeds our friends have done for us, we're going to take these pom poms, okay? Which let's say they represent us. us, okay? And let's see what happens when we put them into the cup. Ready? Let's see. Oh, look! Ah, oh, oh. they didn't go inside. They're floating at the top. Yeah. And what's holding them up? Our friends. <laughs> All the good things that they've done for us. I love it. That's such a great example of being loyal. Now let's see something else. What do you think will happen when we start removing our skewers out of the cup? I wonder what would happen to the pom poms. Well, well, let's find out. Let's think of things that, at times, may seem like our friends were not loyal to us. And every time we could think of something, we'll remove one of the skewers. Or maybe we could even think of a time that we weren't loyal. Okay. Okay. Well, I did tell my friend I was going to meet with her at the shops, but then I got carried away playing too many video games. Mm, that happens. Okay, that's true. Or I remember when I said that I was going to help her with her assignment, but then I got too carried away and I completely forgot and I didn't go and I didn't even let her know. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one time that my friend was in line at the canteen and I pushed in front of her. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I remember another time where my friend told me not to say or share one of her secrets and I shared one of them. Okay. Not nice. Mm, and I remember a time where I said that we could play handball together, but then another popular girl asked me to play with her and I played with her instead. Mm. Yeah, I think my friend was really upset, so I might take out two. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there was one time that my friend Moi really wanted to borrow this book from the library, but I wanted to read it too, and I went and borrowed it before her, oh, okay. and she missed out. Mm. Okay, Oh, now our cup's empty, and where'd the pom-poms go? I can't see them anymore. They're not floating at the top anymore, right? No. So, it looks like when we remove the skewers, and when we saw what happened when we're not loyal, the pom-poms weren't supported anymore, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what can happen when we're not loyal. Well, the Oxford Dictionary defines loyal as giving or showing firm and constant support to a person. Our pom-poms lost their support. Mm. Look how sad it is to see them let down. Not happy and floating at the top anymore. Mm. How does it feel when a friend lets you down? Some people are fair weather friends. That means they're nice to you and treat you well when everything is happy. But as soon as something goes wrong, they'll stop being your friend. That's not loyalty. Think of a friend you've had who, has, who was a fair weather friend. Don't say the person's name though. How did that person make you feel? Today we're learning that God is loyal and we can reflect his heart when we're loyal friends. But what if our friends aren't loyal to us? Do we have to be loyal even when people aren't loyal to us? Let's dig into that. Let's see what the Bible says about God's loyalty. Another word for loyal is faithful. Myrna, could you read from the second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13? Sure. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hmm. So why can't God be unfaithful to us? Because he created us. Hmm. In his image. True. And what does it show about his heart? Very kind and loyal. He never changes, right? Mm hmm How has God been loyal to you? I'm sure there are many ways. God is loyal even though we aren't always loyal to Him. We don't obey Him all the time. Sometimes we don't trust Him. Sometimes we forget to spend time with Him. Sometimes we completely ignore Him. The Israelites complained and even forgot to turn to Him for help. 
But even when we're not loyal, God can't be disloyal to us. He's the model for our relationships. When we're loyal to other people, even if they haven't been loyal to us, we reflect His heart. Let's see what the Bible says about God's loyalty and how we can reflect Him. I'm going to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What would it mean to have loyalty and kindness deep within your heart? As you listen to the next verse, consider how well it describes you. Rania, could you read this one? Sure. It's Proverbs 17, 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Hmm. How well does this verse describe you as a friend or as a sibling? Do you love at all times? The Bible tells us to be loyal friends. Loyalty might look different depending on how our friends treat us. For example, if a friend gets a bad grade on a test, has an embarrassing moment, or becomes unpopular, we can loyally continue to be that person's friend. Those aren't good reasons to stop being someone's friend. But what if a friend is actually hurting us or constantly trying to get us to do bad things? What would loyalty look like in that situation? I think it's safe to say that we shouldn't be loyal to them. We should always do the right thing, no matter what. If people are mean to us all the time or try to get us to disobey God, loyalty might not mean continuing to spend time with them. But it could mean that we keep praying for them, that we're, mean, that we're not mean in response to them, and that we don't talk badly about them. God is loyal and we can be loyal too. Let's think of how we can do that and ask God to always help us reflect His loyal heart by supporting our friends and family. In our Bible story, we learn about a surprising thing God did to provide food for the Israelites. God made food fall from the sky. That's crazy, right? Some crazy weather. Mm -hmm. God had promised to take care of the Israelites, and He did, because God is loyal. God didn't turn His back on the Israelites. So girls, let's play a game, okay? Yeah. In this game, we're going to see the difference between turning your back on others and being loyal. Okay. So for the game, I'll need us all to take a seat, but we'll have to sit down with our backs facing each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's give it a go. Yeah, that's right. You're not facing each other, right? Nope. Okay, so Can't I've got this... Anything. Exactly. So I've got this balloon here, and we're going to try and keep it in the air by passing it to each other, sort of in a circle. But once again, you can't turn around and look at each other. Hmm. Mm? Do you think you can do it? We'll try. I think it's going to be a bit hard. All right, well, mm. I'll begin, Myrna, by passing it to you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, 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 oh no. What's is it coming my way? It's already fallen on the ground. Oh. Mm. This isn't working, is it? No. no. All right, well, let's try something different. Maybe we can face each other this time. Okay. Oh, here it is. There it is. All right, let's see if we can try it now. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's better. That's yes. much easier. Look how many goes we're getting. Oh. What did you think, girls? Well, it was a lot easier when we were facing each other. Mm. Right? Yeah. I didn't know who I was passing it to when my back was to you, girls. Mm -hmm. And this time we kept it in the air for longer. Yeah. Well, in our lives, Sometimes we feel like others have turned their backs on us. Mm. When we've been left out, or when someone forgets something that's important to us, or when someone breaks a promise, it can feel like that they've turned their backs on us and hurt us. Hmm, I finally made a decision on what I'm going to do this Friday. And I'm going to go over and sleep over Renya's place, because she asked me first. Hey Myrna, what are you doing? Hey Amy. 
Well, I've got to tell you that I won't be able to make it to your house this Friday. Instead, I'm going to sleep over Renya's house because she asked me first. Okay, I understand. Hey guys, what are you up to? Hey Renya, I just finished telling Amy that I can make it to your house this Friday and my mum said it's fine because I learned that God is loyal to us and I want to reflect his loyalty to my friends around me. That's really nice, Myrna. And you're right. God is loyal to us always, just like he was with the Israelites. I learned that even if people aren't loyal to us, we should always be loyal to them. Hmm, that's so true, girls. And I also learned that sometimes when we're not loyal to each other, God is still loyal to us, right? Mm -hmm. And I found a Bible verse that reminds me of how we can never be separated from him. It's from Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. And it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We hope that you loved today's lesson and that you learned how loyal God is. Please make sure you tune in next week. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye! Just dropped it. Oh! oh. oh. This isn't really... <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's loyal. He's loyal to us always. <laughs> I can't do that again. I can. I can.